Hello everyone, my name is Fajar Purnama from Kumamoto University. I am currently a master degree student and I would like to present to make a presentation of a journal paper entitled Dynamic Content Synchronization Between Learning Management System of a Limited Bandwidth Network. These are the authors, which one Royana, Bekti, Akma, Yusufu Michisaki, and my professor Itsuyoshi Usagawa. This is the outline of the presentation. And what is this research actually about? It's about adding an update button to contents in LMS. These keywords will explain what this research is about. So I believe that today ICT greatly support education. This is a timeline which the first one I experienced is a conventional face-to-face -face textbooks blackboard running. And then Radio and TV gave educational programs. ICT comes in and now we can I can use these softwares to make to deliver these contents to you. Lots of teachers and lectures do the same thing in their class. Now the internet became very famous where lots and lots of information become accessible to all. With all of this learning management system is born unlike conventional face to face, course and lectures can be taken online. And here, we know. What's the motivation for this research is, as I discussed with the author himself, we agree that how well contents are designed determines the success of e-learning. Is it easy? No, not really. We need resource, effort, time, experience, and even many more. We came from Indonesia and the situation is that on the western side tends to be more advanced civil in civilization and had richer learning contents. There are even some in the eastern part that still don't have a learning content at all. So the question is how to equally distribute the learning contents. Not to provide not to only provide educational for all, but how to provide a quality education for everyone. Our producer and us propose to share and collaborate learning contents, but still we hit a wall, which are well designed contents tends to be unavoidable for revision. And when it's updated, what can we do? Moodle Share and Community Hub offers content collaboration and sharing, but they tend to be very static. What happens if the content is updated? We need to re-download and reinstall if it's the previous method. Re-download every time an update occurs, which we not probable to do in Indonesia because the internet connection is 1 megabit per second and even worse not all areas are penetrated by ICT yet so this is not an option that the centralized LMS we must do a distributed LMS to help with this this pay they contribute a method which is a dynamic context synchronization on distributed LMS what is this really? So, for example, if when a content is updated, we don't need to re-download and reinstall them again. All we need to do is just uh, click the update button and download the updated part only. Like today's or uh, even back then antivirus softwares. This is sometimes we define in synchronization. The master LMS is the one who gives updates. The slave is the one who receives the updates. This differential, the differential delivery is we want is we want to give the updated part only. The hash table is very important for this to succeed because you can ident again identify the certain location. This is the summary of our synchronization method. Here's an example concept. For example, school C developer content 
and want to share now it conducts a revision so school a will request an update from school c and school b will request an update from school c and this is how it works this is what is called a distributed learning management system distributed lms how our synchronization works we define that the we first convert the Moodle table into a synchronization table which contains a content ID and version and hashes. The very first thing we do is do a version matching to see whether the slave LMS is up to date with the master. If it's not, then we continue to the next type. Determine which one is the that we need to update. And then we send the updated part and it will be converted back into Moodle table. This is a sample script that on the paper, which I, in my opinion, can be summarized into three steps. The first one is to see whether an ID exists in master, but doesn't exist in the slave, which means additional information is added to the master. So we need to add that additional information back to the slave. The, rev the next step is reverse to the first one, is to see whether an ID exists in slave, but not in master. So this only means one thing, that certain information is deleted on the master side. So we need to do the same on the slave side, to delete that information. Then the last one is to check for consistency of hashes. So this will identify which part of the content contains modification and then do the update. Here's a sample experiment of course where school A contains a basic geometry. Course school B is empty. This is the cosmic part for the slave side and this is actually the update button. If we push the update button, school B will sing to school A and it will receive the basic geometry course. This one is on a master side if you want to announce update or not. So back then they were fortunate enough to do the experiment on this network. This is they do it on five scenarios, which is first when the content is brand new, update everything from beginning. And the second one, when the slave is up to date with the master. The third one is when we only do uh, order changing. We change the order. The fourth one, if we only add labels like hyperlinks to other resource. The fifth one, if when we add uh, materials, new materials. And they did a data rate measurement back then. We first see that the f functionally the synchronization works. Next, we do the measurement. On the first activity, the downlink, of course, is very high because we need to get all the course from zero to finish to all. On the second activity, there's no downlink because the because the slave is only up to date, and except that we do a lot of uh, version checking here, so there is an uplink. On activity 3 and 4 doesn't show much consumption because we only uh, add a little data or modify a little which is the third one only change the order and the fourth one we add a hyperlink to a source while on the fifth one is very much expected which contain we consumes medium consumption that that we add additional material to a content so we can conclude that uh, we define a method to which is a dynamic content synchronization on distributed LMS to help in content sharing and content collaboration. For future work, we would like to try this on an unstable network. The author said to me, and we should give it a try to do it on email system capability to deal with separated networks and that is all the presentation for this paper and in the future I will continue this research thank you